What's up guys, Tim from Olson Motorsports. Today we have our Raptor AT shock from JRZ and we have our Raptor behind it. Don't pay attention to any of this because you guys think they're funny. They think I'm gonna get stuck when I go off-roading, which is probably true. Um, I'm super clean and I have gloves on, so that means I drew the short straw that I have to put this stuff in the car. Um, so I think I have all the tools laid out but I've actually never done this job before. And we kind of wanted to do that as a do-it-yourself and an install video, so let's get started. Ready, Keith? Yep. All right, hopefully these guys over here don't make too much noise. It's fitting, because today we have American muscle and American muscle in the shop, so. So first step, take the wheels off. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Oh my God. That's officially the biggest wheel I've ever taken off of a car before. So the way this is in here, this, this is, I think this is a 27 millimeter and a 30, a 27 millimeter on this side and a 30 on the back side. But it's got this little scoop right here that protects the bottom of the shock. So I don't think it's gonna go that way. And then it's got this in the way up here. So I think what we're gonna have to do is pop the tie rod off here and pop this upper ball joint out here. That'll allow it to swing away and back that way. We have all the tools out, right? We're not gonna have to go out, we don't have all the tools out. That's a 21. We do have all the tools out. So I don't like to use impacts right off the bat. I just like to break this stuff loose by hand. That's super loose. And that's super loose. That's insane. That's not gonna work. We don't have all the tools up. I gotta go to the toolbox, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna use the impact. Snug this guy off of here. That was easy. Hopefully the whole job goes like that. Famous last words. Uh-huh. Never works out that way, does it? Not on your own card. So. What we do here. Pop that guy in there. If you get a situation like this where the impact won't come off, take it off, you can just put this here and then put a 10 mil gear wrench on it. And just turn it, hold the bolt with the top and turn the bottom. And that'll unthread it. Keith, remember where all this goes? That's why we're recording. Huh? That's why we are recording. <laughs> we can go back and look at footage. We're not doing it for them, we're doing it for us. So I probably should have done this to start with. But we have like these little come-alongs that we use, bungees, for lack of a better term. Are there any alternatives people can use? Yeah, you can use like a regular bungee if you want to. You can do that. And all I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to take the tension off of that brake line there. You know what I mean? I'll just hold that upright. And that'll allow me to get access to this other side. And I'm gonna switch. Because this one is probably gonna be really tight. And it is.
So you're definitely gonna need a really long sort of breaker bar if you're gonna bust that one loose. So you have to use your hands? I gotta use my hands because I'm too lazy to go to the back and get a battery. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of snap-on jokes. Should've used the Milwaukee one, right? So another little thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep a couple threads on that and use the nut to hammer this thing through. And then spit it off. Then I can use a, probably use a pry bar. I can get in here. Take a little tension off. No, that's not gonna work. So let me get a chisel. Sweet. So all that's disconnected. The size of this bolt. It's crazy. It's very atypical for us Porsche guys. It is. Hold on, I thought I had an 18 on there. Yeah, it did. And that's not terrible tight. This one on the back side is going to be challenging. So we're going to see if we can access that from the top. Oh, thanks, buddy. Okay. Look at that. The new guy. Bringing us some light. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of access up here. Perfect. Make it some tools. So this back bolt here is gonna be the one that's hard. I've got a semi-deep with a swivel and my long 3 8 ratchet. So we'll bust that loose there. Be careful of the battery. Obviously, mechanics help her on. So what setup are you using? Snap-on, this one's got a good battery in it. So I have, I have a long extension and then I have a swivel, a 360 swivel and a semi-deep 19, or I'm sorry, semi-deep 18. And that allowed me to get that off of there. And we'll get this back bolt also from up here, which is super, super easy to get to. All right, so that's out. And then the last one, Keith, I think we'll get from down below. You gotta be careful because this is a camber adjustment here. Yeah, so this is your camber adjustment. So what I'm gonna do is mark the position of where it's in. You can get in here while I'm in here, Keith. Let's grab the flashlight. So I got a paint pen and then down here, there's a camber adjustment. I'm gonna mark the location of the studs. So we get back to where we were for camber. We're gonna take it over to the trusty guys at Ford for an alignment, but 
At least we're not driving down the block with a steering wheel crooked. So now, we should be able to dig that damper out of there. There she is. So what I did here is I just see if you can see in there. I shoved my pry bar way down inside there, my longest one, and then I just use it as leverage to push down. You're fighting the bushings here, the rubber bushings. So then that'll be out. And then we can take our last uh, would have been smarter to take the would have been smarter to take the fender liner out, but that's too, just more work. We're too lazy for that. That bad boy is out. Let's go see what it looks like next to the That's what it looks like next to the JRZ AT. Pretty cool. So the spring is smaller in diameter, isn't it? Yeah, it's linear. This is a little progressive, so it's got the smaller coil here. So it's gonna be a little bit progressive on that. But this will be a linear coil, so hopefully. It should go uh, right in. And then obviously the other side of the vehicle is the exact same, the exact same removal as this side. There's easier access because you don't have the intake tube on yep. the driver's left. Yep. It's easier access, but it's the same exact procedure for removal. And now we'll put them in. You're gonna, you're gonna help me in just a second. So All right, so here we go. Out. Yeah. All right, so guys, pro tip on any kind of shock installation is you have ride height. So we want to make sure that collapse ride height here to here is the same on both, um, especially when you're going to corner weighted car. When you're going to corner weighted car, it's even more important. So what I just do is I just take it like this and I'm, you know, leading edge there and I measure down here and I have 420 millimeters to the bottom of this, which that's a fixed point, doesn't move. So then I'm going to come over here and check this side and I got 420 millimeters. So let's say if I had 415 or 410, I would just roll this down to meet that on both sides, especially when you're corner weighting, which obviously we're not gonna quarter weight a Raptor, but if you're corner weighting a car, that could be a difference of 30 or 40 pounds of weight on that axle. So that's just a pro chip, something that we always check. So two questions. Yep. Is there a set height for stock height, remaining stock height? Uh, stock height on this on this truck would be pretty much here, all the way down. Okay. That would be stock height on this truck. This so this is this is the stock, and then the other one would be a little bit of preload. Okay. So what they use is they use they use a helper. They use a little bit of a helper here, and then what that does is when you set the truck down, it preloads. And then is there an advantage or disadvantage to a inverted versus? It's really on this, on this, I like them because then you don't have all of the salt or road dust or whatever sitting here on the top. And, you know, especially on a, on a road driven car, which this will be, you won't have all that stuff sitting here seeping past the main seal. Also, it's also where the hose comes out. So the hose would come out here on the top, whereas if it came out here on the bottom, we would have to route it up and around the axle. So it's, it's nice. If you can do inverted, it's nice to do an inverted style damper. So let's get these things in. All right, 
Let me grab Todd. It's so heavy. You want me to pull it down? You try to put it in? Yeah. Come on, little one. Got it. In? Yep. Yeah. Alright, you want let's locate the bolt. Let's get the bolt in. You know what I mean? The bolt goes uh, from you that way. You want to do the lower first? I think we should get the top one started and then we can clock. No? Because how are we going to... All right, so yeah, let's do that. That's fine. Just get them started. Yep. Probably going to have to do it. That one started. All right, give me the other one. We may have to rotate it now, though. Okay, and then the rear one? Yeah, I can get it. Here, watch out. I'll push, I'll push this stuff out. It's perfectly centered right now, so. Yeah. Okay, started. Okay, what size are those? Looks like 15. 15? All right, so I'll get you. It's probably an American size, you know? It might be a too small. A little more? Use a hammer. We were definitely not made to do off-road, were we? Well, it was first time for everything, right? Yeah. Do, are we, do we like the position of that hose before we go any further? Um, yeah. Where are you mounting? Yeah, because this is all going to go up. It goes in here. You're going to go in here? Yeah, it all goes in there. It all mounts up. So what we need to do now... Jack it up? Not yet. We need to get this indexed. So, guys, I don't know if you understand what we did. We were able to get one of these center holes here. We we're able to get that lined up. It's almost a two person job if you're gonna do it, you know, without disassembling all of this. And we were able to force that down and get the bolt in with a pry bar. And then we were able to get this one started here and the other two we did from up top. So if you remember before we'd put our marks in, our paint marks. So Todd's gonna go up top and use a long, uh, what's this like a two foot ratchet or a two foot extension. And then he's going to go up top and tell me which way to rotate to get to our camber setting. Which do you mark the, I see the yellow paint marks. Yeah, yellow paint mark. The center? Yeah. The center of the stud? Yeah. The bolt? Yeah. This one here was a little bit off. The paint mark was more this way. All right, let me double check this. There's an electric ratchet over here. Want to do this one or can you get to this one? Or should I do it? I was just gonna run it in a little bit. Yeah. Alright, so what we did was we put a jack under here, we jacked it back up, we got our upper control arm located, and then basically pulled it down, snugged it up. Same with the tie rod, and then we're gonna come back and torque this, and then I still have this nut to wrench down. And then we gotta mount the canister. So the canister actually goes over here. We're gonna to have to remove the skid plate, I believe. So they gave us a 
Yeah, it goes right there. And then they gave us these brackets. And these brackets go. Looks like they're going these two. Yeah. It's either like this or like this, whichever. I think it's like this. That's where the canister. No, I'll try it the other way. Maybe back here. Uh, oh, so it's going to hit here, that. Look, put it back here. Yeah. Then we can do it like that. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah, that'll be nice. Perfect. So this bracket here, it's got a this slot here and this slot here. So we can just loosen this nut, this bolt and this bolt. And then we'll go under, we'll have to go underneath this and over that more than likely. To get it in there just like that. And then I'll slide in and sit flush and the canister, the, the canister will sit there. So it's actually a really, really, really nice piece. So, all right, we'll get these nuts off and we'll get the thing and check back with you. Finally. This thing doesn't have an RO? No. We supposed to have, we're supposed to have an RO. You're not gonna make this guy pay for it? You want me to bill the guy that pays the bills? Well, yeah, I mean, he's not going to pay it, but... So, can I count the hours towards the week for what we need to meet? On your commission? No. No, no, on, like, the goal for the no, week? No, no, we can't do that. So why would I make an RO? How does that benefit me? Because that's our procedure. Way? Okay, well, sorry. My bad. <laughs> I guess I'll sign Cause now, now, Because now I have to scroll through here and try to find this thing. I, I, I'll sign the write-up on that one. Uh-huh. What engine's in this turd? 3.5 EcoBoost. 3.5 EcoBoost. I can't say those things because it's mine. Suddenly I feel nervous working on this thing. I don't know why. It's got a weird feeling. It's got to be better than when you put the radar detector in. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're installing the mount for the remote reservoir so it can fit here. Um, so one of the bolts is for the uh, radiator support. The other one is just a bumper bracket for this for the splash guard. So uh, what I had to do, since this comes in and hooks into the chassis, this is lower than the plane of the frame here. So I had to put a couple of washers in between uh, this bracket and where the bolt goes through for the radiator support just to make it so it was straight, otherwise it was going to bend and uh, be a little bit, it was going to sit funny. So now it's nice and secure. Uh, I got this one in, I got to just tighten this bolt and snug both of these and torque them and then we can get ready to mount the can, which theoretically is going to go just like this. We may have to change the clocking. We're going to have to put the wheel on and check, do a wheel sweep. We do not want on turn in to have the tire, one of the knobs of the tires catch this hose because uh, that's just going to cause all sorts of mayhem. So. Uh, if necessary, we may end up having to clock this a little differently so that we can get the hose out of the way of the tire. It's also possible that the tire won't interfere. We will not know until we get the car, get some weight on the car, and then do a sweep of the tires. So that's where we're at right now. We'll be back in a couple minutes. I gotta torque the ball joints. What do you want to use for insulation from the hose clamps on these? So Probably a little piece of rubber. Like, rubber, like the rubber that we have in the little cabinet, the little gasket rubber stuff. Like so the sheet, yeah, the you sheet. You mean the gasket material? Yeah, yeah. So this is, both of these are 85 foot-pounds. Helps if I go the right way. Change sockets. So that's torqued, that's torqued. That's gonna look good, Keith, isn't it? Yep. Like that, and then we'll check the 
wheel clearance. Let me go get the nitrogen. These just at the pressure. So what pressure are you putting it to? I'm putting it to nitrogen pressure here, which is 240. So we'll start with 240 and see what that does. We'll probably end up coming down. We'll probably end up coming down to about 200, but that's where we'll start. Depends on how, how hard we hit bumps, Key. Hopefully hard. If we hit bumps really, really hard, we're gonna need a lot of nitrogen pressure. For sure. And then here, let's go. One, two. So what's a good starting point for adjustments? I'm gonna start at 10 there. And how do you know where to start? Years of experience. So for those, for those without years of experience. <laughs> so I like to use only as much rebound as I need to because rebound is what makes it not so good on the bumps. So I'll, I'll start, especially front engine, I'm gonna start it at 12 compression, right? So which is 75%. So I'll use 12 compression which is a heavy compression because this is where most of the weight is, is on the axles. We'll start with 12 compression, heavy on that to get, to get really, really good on the bumps. And then if we get to the point to where the truck is skipping sideways when it hits a bump, we'll lower compression and I'll get myself happy with compression and then I'll sneak it on rebound. So I don't want to use rebound as a band-aid, so to speak. I want to get my compression so I absorb the bump and the truck feels good on the bumps and then we'll ease into rebound as we need to. So that's kind of what I've always done as a shock guy, I've always snuck into compression first and then done it the other way. I forgot where I was at. 10. We're gonna do 10 and 10 and 12. So we only have 16 here on compression on the canister and we had 24 on rebound. So usually on these linear spring on these linear shim stacks, you won't start seeing you know, aggressive jumps on the shock curve until you get up around nine. So we'll put a little bit of preload in it on the shim stack. So that'll be a nice place to start. So like basically 10 to 15, you'll feel a decent improvement. And then 15 on, you'll feel more aggressive each click. So we'll kind of start there with a little bit of preload and see what happens. It's gonna be awesome. Way better than stock. Think so? I think so, I know so. I have to say that. So let me find. Let me put that nut on, which we never did, right? That could be bad. That would suck. And I, who would who would I blame for that? Me. Well, closest have, person to you. That's probably true. But I only have myself to blame. That was on camera. Todd, what's the uh, what's the lower shock bolt torque? on this thing. If you look on that computer, it should be on the screen on the shop key. Oh, 406 foot-pounds. No way. Or 550 newtons, whichever one you're going. There's no way. Dude, you, I thought you took that off with like a stubby box wrench. Oh, that, I've been working out, but come on. <laughs> Where do you see that? Right there. And, the, and it's even highlighted in pink. There's no way. It shows you exactly which pull. It has to be the one. 406? That's a lot. I don't know. You gonna make that? I'm gonna have to hang, if I do it, I'm gonna have to hang on the, on the bar. I don't know if I can make that one. That's more than a. Well. Sure you, sure you looked up the right car? It's not. Hey, a, we're not. Is this a Freightliner? I don't know. That's what I was gonna ask. It was like a Ford uh, semi tractor. At least we get to use uh, our three thousand dollar torque wrench. That's unbelievable. Four hundred and six. Oh, so if this thing breaks, with huh? that, and you want me to hold it with that? Yeah. How's that gonna work? Well, gonna it's on, I'm on the, the nut side, son. I'm retired from working out, man. 400. That, that's GT3 RS uh, center lock. You know, I'm a desk jockey now, so I don't know if I can handle this. This is like you're 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 reaching. You sure that's in foot pounds and not newton meters? I'm 550 newtons. And <laughs> shit. <laughs> 
Yeah. You don't have, I don't, I bet you don't, here, let me do it. I'll no, do it no, with no, one no, hand. No, no. Okay. I'll do it with if one hand. If you want to do it, Hercules, look at that. This is insane. I don't know, man. I don't, that doesn't feel the greatest. Wow. It's not torque. You, you think it's torque to yield? I don't think so. Where you at? A lot. Holy smokes. What's it at? 375. There you go. <sighs> Made it. One-handed. Boy, I hope you don't have to do an infield repair on Could that. Could you imagine doing this on the, in the ditch? No, you flipped the car over. Incredible. That's I mean, T.O. right there, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Aquaman. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a lot of torque on there. It's ridiculous. So now we have to mount. Yeah, that'll look good. All we have left is mount the shock. So we have all that stuff tight up there. And we have this, and we're ready to go. 55 newton meter or 55 foot pounds on the top bolts. Okay. Did you torque them yet or no? No, I didn't. So what Todd's doing right now is he's putting a little bit of, because we're going to mount this with hose clamps, so he's putting a little bit of rubber. And basically what this is, is this is just gasket material. So he's going to put that around the shock and around the hose clamp so it won't, it won't scratch anything. It's got to look, look pretty. Nice. It's got to look pretty. Do you think we should insulate the backside too? That go around the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Or you could just do the front. No, the front's fine. So you think we should do it like wrap all the way around like that? No, because then when you go to pinch it down, it'll just squeeze it together. Yeah, you could. But then, because it's going to rub on here too, yeah, and that's yeah, just that's steel on aluminum. That's a good idea. So we might as well. You can't scratch it up. That's a good idea. No, you don't want to scratch it up. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the wheel on so that we can check that hose. You have to put the wheel on while it's this height. Come on. You just did 400 and... Six foot pounds. Yeah, the wheel probably weighs almost that much. Yeah. That was with leverage though. There's no way, bro. You gotta do the knee trick. You gotta get it. Is it clean and jerk? Knee, and that's my that's my diesel trick. If I get hurt, do I get to go home? No. Uh no. Damn. That's heavy. <laughs> that's gotta be a legitimate hundred pounds. Oh, there's gonna be plenty of room. Hey, let's let's roll. I think we're unlocked here. Oh yeah, no, not even close. That's locked. That's locked. It didn't hit what, the what steering about, lock, right? No, I'm on steering lock. What about compression? No, but I mean like that's locked on the wheel. The yeah, yeah. steering wheel itself didn't just no. lock, right? Okay. Okay. So this is this way. That's good. And that's that's plenty. This not way. even close. All right. Okay. So we have the canister mounted now. It's solid in there. Um, so we have two clamps with the rubber insulators and because the owner of this vehicle just happens to be like minorly OCD, I had to clock the clamps so that they're even and make the gaps of the insulator bushings all in the same place because otherwise I'll have to redo the whole job. Um, so, but it looks good. The hose is out of the way. We checked our sweep so that we make sure we have clearance. Obviously we will double check again with weight on the vehicle. When the wheel goes up, we will make sure that there's no interference here, but this hose is not gonna go anywhere and neither is the canister. So provided that we clear, we should be good to go on this corner. And pro tip, talk about how tight to go through those. You don't wanna over tighten. You don't them. wanna over tighten the, the clamps that go around here because you can actually put pressure on the aluminum housing of the canister, which will not allow the divider piston to move properly. It'll bind slightly. Uh, it will still function, but not at full performance. So I use a snap-on uh, ratcheting quarter inch driver and I have it set on eight right now, but it's not a whole lot of torque. And when you get to the proper uh, point, you'll hear it. It won't tighten any further. Uh, you don't want to crank them down too hard. Um, hose clamps generally will not let you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We have easy access to our adjustment here. Uh, we have easy access to our adjustment here just by turning the wheel. Everything's tight and torqued. We're gonna move on to the back and get one of the rear dampers in. All right, so we got our dead man out here. We got our dead man out here to hold the axle because I don't think Todd's gonna be able to hold it. What do you think, Todd? Oh, you think you could? I'm gonna go the right way here. 
Oh, that's that. <laughs> that's still not the right way. There we go. I already broke it loose for you. Pro tip, see what he's doing? He's holding the wrench on the inside on the of the bolt while I spin it. Did it. That was that tight? We didn't need that, right? That's the fastest shocker Look at that. I've ever had. Here's what it looks like. Back to back. This is gonna be sick. I'm so excited. Are you excited, <laughs> Todd? Yes. I'm really, really even excited to play play army guy with this later. Cause it's like a or shoulder it really, fire. It is. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, when you guys go home, I'll be playing army guys here at the shop. Aren't you supposed to do that with your kid? No, I taught them how, but no, I, I can have my own fun too. It's like GI Joe in real life form. We go under here. This is gonna be so much easier than the front, isn't it? Get the bolt. I don't have the bolt. You got the you bolt. You took it out. I have the nut. I was waiting for you. I'll hold, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I got it. I had the shock. How am I supposed to get the shock in the bolt? I don't the know. You had the ratchet in your hand. You put it in the center. You can't see it. There you go. There we go. See? So it's easy for us to move this piston around because we don't have any nitrogen pressure in it. So we can push it out and pull it in kind of at will, which makes for an easy install. Oh, you got one? I'm already, I'm already there, buddy. Yeah, I see that. And then we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with the can. Do we have mounts for this? Yes, we do. Okay. So accessibility wise. Yeah, we'll put them over there or something. Put them somewhere back here. It'd actually be nice to yeah to go that route, then you can reach. Because then you the can wheel. reach in and yeah. Diameter wise, yeah, these are 60. bigger than the normal ones we're used to using. Yeah. Do we have? Uh, All right, so we just gotta run these nuts down. Let's do it. I'm scared to go look up the torque spec for these things. I'll get it. All right, so we check the torque. It's gonna be 62 foot pounds on this bolt. Torque this bad boy down. On that side. The same on this one. Then the last step would be, what are we forgetting, Keith? Set the nitrogen yeah, pressure. Yeah, set the nitrogen pressure. Nice work. Let me get the machine. All right, so now we got everything together. Our last step before we mount the can, we're gonna do the same thing in the front. We're gonna pressurize it up 240. Good to go. So now we have the front installed, the front can mounted, the rear install. We'll mount the rear cam, and then obviously the other side is the symmetrical. inverse, symmetrical to this, or mirror. Mirror. Is mirror, right? Yeah, this mirror image of this would be remove and replace the other side. So we'll check back in with you when we get the car back on the ground. Okay, so we finished the install. We got the car down. Um, and if you take a look over here, we're still factory height, which we verified. All the suspension is in. 
We're going to do a follow-up video. The front canisters we mounted with the JRZ canisters. The rear ones, we've not developed anything yet. So we mounted the canisters back here, right in front of the wheel well. So we'll do a follow-up video where we make a bracket. We're gonna make a nice little bracket that'll be included with the kit that we'll mount over here on this side. Um, super excited to drive it. Like I said, if you guys have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section, subscribe to our channel, and we'll do our next review. We'll be uh, on our Polar Rally, which we're going to this weekend. And we're gonna do 1,500 miles, uh, 300 of them off-road, back and forth to the UP and back. So check in back with us then. Thanks for watching, guys.